Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian. In this video, I will be doing examples of definite integrals that require substitution. This material is from section 5.5, the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, and more specifically, pages 372 to 373, examples 3 and 4. The corresponding homework is this short assignment of three exercises from section 5.5. Recall that in the previous video we discussed the fundamental theorem of calculus, which is the relationship between definite integrals and antiderivatives. The theorem says if a function little f of x is continuous on a closed interval a, b, then this definite integral is equal to this computation involving the indefinite integral. And recall the substitution method for finding the indefinite integral, where the integrand involves a nested function. It's this five-step process, which we used in a number of examples in previous videos. In the current video, I will just do three examples involving finding a definite integral where the integrand has to be integrated using the substitution method. Example one, is similar to 5.5 number 37. It's to find this definite integral. I'll solve the problem using the same format that I used in the previous video when we found integrals using the fundamental theorem of calculus. And there's our result. Notice that the format of this solution is exactly the same as the format that I used in the previous video. I used the fundamental theorem of calculus to replace this definite integral expression with this indefinite integral expression. And then I did the indefinite integral details off to the side and then brought the results back in and put them in the parentheses where the indefinite integral had been sitting. The only difference in the current video is that the indefinite integral details are messy because I had to use substitution. I used the five-step substitution method that I uh, recalled earlier in the video. These five steps. Note that the result of the indefinite integral was a general antiderivative with a constant of integration plus d, which shows up there, but then gets canceled in, this, in the subtraction step. The result was this fraction. The instructions were to give an exact answer in the form of an integer or a simplified fraction. So there we go. That's how I want to present the answer. I don't want to, I don't want to write that as 0.3. I want to write it as 3 tenths. Let's go on. Example 2. This is similar to 5.5 number 39. Find this definite integral. Well, I'll set up my solution in the same way that I've set up the previous ones.
there is our result after a very long calculation. But the comforting thing to note is that, again, the, the format of these problems is always the same. You use the fundamental theorem of calculus to replace a definite integral with an expression involving an indefinite integral. The way that I like to solve these is I do the indefinite integral details off to the side. And then I substitute the results back in where the indefinite integral sat before. The only thing that was different in this current problem from the problems in the previous video was that the indefinite integral details involved substitution. That's the theme for this video. Notice the key step in step three, I did not rewrite the integrand as a power function. I left this as the integral of one over u. Remember that one over u is u to the negative one. The power rule for indefinite integrals does not apply in the situation where n equals negative one. You have to integrate one over u by using the one over u rule. The indefinite integral of one over u is L of absolute value of u plus c. And then note that once I substituted the result of the indefinite integral back in, I had to go to work simplifying. Of course, the constant of integration cancels right away. That's simple. The absolute value you have to deal with very methodically. We start with these expressions, lots of layers of parentheses and absolute values, and they get simplified bit by bit. We simplify that expression by noting that absolute value of 6 is just 6. And then we use the fact that b ln of a equals ln of a to the b power. That enables us to rewrite 2 ln of 6 as ln of 36. Our exact answer, written in symbols, is ln of 36. Type that into a calculator you get a decimal answer that is an approximation. The instructions were to give an exact answer and a decimal approximation rounded to three decimal places. The only way to write the answer exactly is to leave it in symbols like that. Either this or this. They're both acceptable forms for presenting the answer in, a, in an exact form. Let's go on. There's one more example. Example 3, this is similar to 5.5, number 45. We are to find this definite integral. Here we go. There is our result. We are asked for an exact answer and a decimal approximation rounded to three decimals. The exact answer you have to write in symbols this way. The quantity e minus 1 divided by 2e. Or it can be written this way. Either is fine with me. I'm not sure what the MyLab system would want, though. Decimal approximation is not exact, but it uh, gives you an idea of roughly how big the number is. Now notice the details of the calculation. 
I did the usual substitution steps very thoroughly, uh, circling with red and green my, my equations that I was going to use for the substitution. Notice that if you followed my uh, handwriting, I made a mistake early on. I neglected this minus sign. I had to come back later and put this minus sign in all these steps where I realized I'd forgotten it. The simplification was straightforward. I used the fact that e to the 0 is just the number 1. And then e to the minus 1 is 1 over e to the 1. That is 1 over e. So as with the previous examples in this video, lots of steps. No individual step is all that hard, but there are so many of these steps that the problems are hard because uh, it's, it's difficult to get through all these steps without making a mistake. Well, that's the end of that example, and that's the end of this video. Thank you.